Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I rise to oppose this bill. Um, I find a, a good bit about the bill. While well-intentioned, certainly everyone wants to do everything they can to keep school children and employees and teachers safe. I think that this bill is one of those bills that would do far more harm than good, go far more towards creating additional problems and solving existing problems. There are a variety of reasons for that. You know, my mom was a public school teacher for 30 years. You didn't know my mom, but uh, you're going to have to trust me when I tell you that the idea of her shooting it out with a madman with a semi-automatic weapon is utterly preposterous. And that's true of almost all of us. You know, there's very few people who can handle, and what, that, what we're talking about is a combat situation. Very few people can handle that. No one knows what they would do until they're in it, but even people who are highly trained, when they're actually confronted with that situation, freeze many times, or in other ways, panic and do not act appropriately. This bill says that you have to be trained in, uh, take a training in the use of a firearm, the handling of a firearm. I'm not talking about the logistics of how you point a gun and pull the trigger. I am talking about the, and, and it also requires some psychological evaluation to make sure that you don't have a, 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 an issue, that you're not, don't have a mental illness that will cause you to do something with the gun. And that's, that's good. And I commend Senator Street for, uh, getting that in the bill. But just because you don't have a psychological impediment doesn't mean that you were in any way psychologically prepared to be in that situation. You know, we train police officers who go to the police academy or we train members of the military who go through basic training and then subsequent training intensely, far more intensely than this bill ever contemplates that school teachers will be going through. And they make mistakes all the time. And to put, you know, an algebra teacher or an art teacher in the position of fighting it out with somebody with, an, with, with, with a powerful weapon is just not, with, with no training other than how to handle the weapon, and no psychological training at all is just doesn't make any sense. The other big issue, uh, Mr. President, is how this works in practicality. And I ask my colleagues to think about this. I mean, where will this gun be? If the gun is in a safe or in a locked drawer or in a locked compartment, it's not going to be very effective. I mean, if, if a person busts into a classroom with a gun r blaring, ready to shoot people, someone going up to a safe and saying, excuse me, you know, 26, 34, 14, you know, assuming they're calm enough to do that, that's not going to work. They're, 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 the, 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 uh, they will be rendered um, uh, in, in, unable to continue doing that very quickly. Similarly, if there's a, a lock, you know, I gotta get my key, I gotta open the drawer. There's not time to do that. The only way this is gonna be effective is if the gun is accessible, if it's immediately accessible. And in order for a gun to be immediately accessible, it's gonna to have to be either in an unlocked drawer or in some other place where a person can reach for it and use it immediately. How long will it be until the first student who has a problem or is upset or is fighting with another student, sees the teacher across the room giving instructions on, on some other issue or drawing on the blackboard or getting a drink and gets that gun and starts shooting people in that classroom. How long will it be till some enterprising criminal gets through a metal detector of a school knowing that there's a gun in a classroom, has no gun on them, gets in the classroom, overpowers the, you know, 96 pound woman who's teaching physics and grabs the gun. I mean, packing schools full of guns that are easily accessible 
to untrained and unexperienced and unprepared people is not a recipe for increased public safety. You know, people have talked about, well, people who are involved in this situation would want the option. And I've never been involved in the, this situation, but I can tell you there are some people who have been that I think we ought to listen to. Um, I have a letter here from the teachers who were survivors of the, in my view, worst school shooting in America, but not only the worst school shooting, but perhaps in many ways the most horrific crime. The murder of those first grade children at Newtown, uh, at New, at, at Newtown Elementary. And they sent me a letter and they asked me to read it today, expressing their view. So I'm just going to go ahead and read that very quickly. Dear, dear Senators, we understand that you are discussing the idea of giving school districts in Pennsylvania the option of allowing their teachers, principals, and other school employees to carry concealed firearms on school premises. We also understand that some senators have said during the course of this discussion that they feel the teachers in Newtown would have wanted this option. We are educators who survived that faithful day on December 14, 2012. We would like to make something clear. We would have not have wanted that option, nor would it have made us or our students any safer. In fact, it might have made things worse. As the gunman burst in with an AK AR-15, we were taking care of terrified children huddled into coats and backpacks behind closed doors, listening to 145 gunshots unleashed in five minutes in the classrooms and hallway of our elementary school. We did not know where the perpetrator was or how many there were, nor could we leave our terrified students. It's completely unrealistic to think that an educator with a gun would have been able to take down the gunman without interfering with law enforcement's response or harming or killing other educators or, God forbid, children. You must understand how fast shootings happen and how chaotic and confusing it is. We had no way to determine from whom and from where the gunfire was coming. This is not the movies. In five minutes, 26 people were dead in our school, 20 first graders and six adults. Moreover, unsecured guns carried by individuals can be left unattended, accidentally discharged, or wrestled from the carrier, and all those pose significant risk to children and adults alike. To put students in harm's way because of your notion that an educator could take down an active shooter while shielding children from gunfire is absurd. Study after study shows that guns in a home increase the risk of suicide and homicide. So how would a classroom be different? Good guys with guns rarely take down bad guys with guns. Look at Columbine, look at Virginia Tech, look at Fort Hood. Armed security, trained police, and a military base couldn't stop these shootings. We are educators who teach peace and nonviolence. We teach conflict resolution by talking out our problems. We hail historical figures like Martin Luther King Jr. and Mahatma Gandhi. What would the presence of guns in schools teach children? We would not have been able to save those murdered at Sandy Hook with our guns. Instead of allowing more guns in more public places, perhaps we should shift the conversation to finding ways to keep firearms out of the hands of dangerous people. And this is signed by about 15 of the teachers who were there that day at Sandy Hook. And before we do this, before we find ourselves a, a month, six months, a year, three years from now, deeply regretting this decision, let us take time to listen to the people who were there, who've been through this, who understand, and let's heed their warning and their admonition to us to be more wise and more thoughtful than I fear this bill will lead us to be.